My name is Brian Mackey Mason. I'm an undergraduate nuclear engineering student, and today I'm going to talk to you about an experiment to test creep in T91 for use in Generation 4 nuclear reactors. My advisors were Cheng Zhu, a graduate student, and Professor Gary Waz. So first, I'm going to talk to you about some background information. T91 is a metal used in Generation 4 reactors for fuel pellet casing. We don't know about much about this metal, so we would like to know more. One of the properties that is important to nuclear reactors is creep. Creep is when a load is put on a material for a prolonged period of time. A better understanding of the mechanisms of creep, as well as creep rate, is desired from this experiment. Here I have a graph to show you the basic um, understanding of creep. We have the first stage, tertiary stage at the beginning. The secondary stage is a constant rate of creep or strain, and that is during the service lifetime of the material. The tertiary stage is um, the point at which it increases its rate again up to its rupture point. So in the experiment, my part in the experiment was to do a lot of data analysis and algorithms. So data comes in in the form of a matrix in a large text file. And it's, we need to have methods available and algorithms available to us to analyze this data in an appropriate and correct method. This is an example of the data we could receive from some of our tests. Sigma is our stress or our applied load. T is time and epsilon is strain. And this is the data that I used to run tests on the algorithm that I designed. I designed an algorithm to, well, I'll get into that more later. So how do we analyze data? We can graph it, derive an equation, or find a derivative or integrate it to analyze the data and better understand the processes that are taking place. I chose to derive an equation because this is the most appropriate method for the experiment. We wish to understand the process and predict future behavior of these metals. So an equation is the most appropriate form of analysis available to us. How do we find the proper equation? Well, we have to vary the parameters of the experiment to find the most, um, most appropriate equation available. We can vary the, in our experiment, we can vary the stress or a applied load. We can vary our dose rate applied to the sample. And we can vary the temperature near the sample. We also need a list of equations available to us in order to determine all of the dependencies of, of the data. So I developed an algorithm in order to find an equation to describe the creep in T91. This is a, the data set I showed you earlier. In this data set, the stress sigma was the varied parameter, and this is what I used to test the algorithm in order to ensure it worked well. The algorithm involves a basic algebraic formulation of dividing all the data by itself and then solving for the dependency. So in order to test the data, I assumed a power dependency on the applied load. And this is how I solved for that dependency. Just a simple algebraic equation, nothing too special, but it uses all of the data points that were collected 
to ensure that the error was minimized. These are some of the results I obtained from this, um, this testing of the algorithm. The, I, I randomly generated data and then found a dependency on that data. Then I plotted the re-derived data from the dependency against the original randomized or experimental data. And these are the results. As you can see, there's little error in them. And this proves that the algorithm works as desired. This is a, another way to display the data. In this case, it shows strain versus stress and an, um, a power of approximately two dependencies. This graph has the experimental data or the randomized data plotted against the theoretical data where I assumed a power dependency of two. The randomized data was centered around a value of two with some random standard deviation which would occur in any experiment we conduct. So finally, I'd like to conclude by mentioning that this method is only a statistical process and it relies on the experimenter's ability to understand the theory well and to derive, to choose the correct equations. Certain assumptions have to be made for this um, algorithm to be valid. The theory must be solid behind the equations. The reason for choosing the equations must be valid as this algorithm doesn't account for mistakes made by the experimenter. And each parameter must be independent of each other parameter. The future work in this project, the algorithm, would be to allow for more user choice, such as putting, inputting their choice equations into the algorithm in order to find a better dependency, as well as for choosing a certain time as to when to find the dependency. Because as you see from the graph, at certain times there are certain different dependencies on certain values because the creep rate changes over time. So it would be important for the user to know what, what mechanisms are taking place at certain stages of creep. And finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this video presentation and for my advisors for giving me this opportunity this summer. Thank you.